back to Taylor Tales. We're here, chapter 25. I'm pretty sure, obviously, he doesn't have 25 chapters. He may have 27 or 29. Either way, that's like, what, 7 to... 6, 7, 8, 9, 4, 7, oh my god. 2 to 4 episodes left. A pair of footsteps descends the stairs, just in time for the microwave to beep. We'll take out two cups of hot chocolate, then turn around and face James, who just entered, who's just entered the kitchen. I made one for you, I say, offering the second cup. James gives me a suspicious uh. look. How did you know I would come? I shrug. I had a feeling you couldn't sleep either. Uh. I heard a noise, so I came to see if it was you, he says, as he takes the cup from my hand. Worried about me, I ask, shooting him a smirk. It's the last night before we infiltrate Julio's meeting location the past week. Uh, sorry, pause. The past week I've been training non-stop with James and Eok to prepare for this. Huh. You've received as much training as I could give you in such a short period of time. And it's not that I is, it is not I that is worried, he responds. I guess he realizes I've been fretting all night and wasn't able to sleep. I just look towards the couch in the living room so we can sit down. I'm so sorry if you hear Arya, like, wrestling with her toy. Can you... Okay, you can't even see her, can you? She's like down there. <laughs> we sit down on the couch together, cup in her, cu cups in our hands. The steam of the hot chocolate slowly dissipates into the air. I admit I'm quite anxious about tomorrow. I've never done anything like this before. Nerves before your first mission are completely normal. It keeps your senses sharp. I quietly sip my hot chocolate. It's also not letting me sleep. Uh. Are you concerned the mission will not succeed, he asks. Julio has been a large terrorist organization for decades. If the authorities haven't been able to stop them before, what chance do I have? A no-name superhero, I sigh softly. <laughs> it sounds like the authorities in your world are incompetent at their jobs, James sneers, or willfully turning a blind eye. You know, it could very well be that they are both in on it. Working together, I suggest my head filling with conspiracy theories. Just like your sister and Eok were part of the resistance all along. James wraps his hand around, hands around the cup, silently contemplating. Mm. I did not know she was conspiring the shadows, he admits. Or perhaps I was turning a blind eye to her actions as well. I mean, you did know she was sneaking out of the palace. You must have had your suspicions, I surmise. Uh. The closer someone is to you, the harder it is to face the truth about them, he says softly. Which is true, because you know, you've developed such care for this person, so you don't want to believe that they're doing said thing. In a way, that's the same thing with Benjamin. I never had an inkling of an idea that he was actually with Julio, let alone the de facto leader. Why do you think she kept it a secret from you? I ask. The question makes James stiffen up in response. I don't know, my family is what is most important to me. She should have known I was on her side, I always have been. Everything James has done has been in the name of the survival of his family. What was it that you said before? Something about how parents never told me they were vigilantes to protect me. Perhaps Lena was doing the same thing. James snorts in response. Ah. I was doing the protecting. Lena was powerless after the invasion of our planet. How could she possibly protect me? I shake my head. Now everything is about physical strength. Lena may not have been able to fly, but she was mighty, very mighty, bleh, she was mighty powerful behind the scenes. From the small glimpses I've seen, she's tried many go to be on her side. I place my empty cup on the coffee table, then lean back into the couch. She could rally them to support her. I'm sure she was doing everything she could to keep you and your brother safe in her own way. For a small moment, James go grows quiet. Usually he has a retort or counter argument, repeating only strength matters, but it seems my words finally got through to him. Absent mindedly places the cup on the table as mm. well. As she told me, it would have helped her. Maybe that's why she didn't. She knew you'd help her and get into, your, into trouble yourself. Mm. That would have been my choice to make. No, I agree with that. I don't think she should have taken away your agency. Much like how my parents kept everything hidden from me and my brother. <sighs> I understand their position, both my sister and your parents, but also disagree with their actions. He scans me with his dark eyes. I think you'll be perfectly equipped to handle whatever they were involved with. I can't help but smile in response. Thanks. I also think Lena should have told you. you you'd probably lead them to victory. <laughs> I never lose a battle, he smirks confidently. Oh, what about this attack on Earth? <laughs> Except when it comes to Earth, I chuckle. Yeah. Earth doesn't count, he dismisses just as quickly. What? How come it doesn't? Mm. It wasn't a battle, he states simply. I guess my eyes must be deceiving me. I'm pretty sure there was a fight there was fighting involved. Mm. It was supposed to be a negotiation. Unfortunately we due to Eok's action and yours it failed. I put my finger to into his chest. Uh I think you failed it first of all, because your first attack didn't come out so great. 
Just a minute, you lost it, Godamon. James brushes away my hand, huffing indignantly. I did not lose. I made a strategic decision not to engage. I burst out laughing. Wow, you really don't want to admit your loss, huh? I rub up my eyes, still smiling like an <laughs> idiot. Because I have it, he persists stubbornly. Keep that positivity for tomorrow, I say. We're going to need it. Do not fret, we won't fail, he reassures me. You're under my protection. A lump forms in my throat as I stare at him with wide eyes. The way he just came out with it, so nonchalant. Something I need to get used to. You'll protect me, I ask he almost hesitantly. <laughs> Why does he look so confused? Like, oh, yeah, duh, obvi. <laughs> James folds his arms across his chest, corking an eyebrow at me. Uh -huh. What else should I do? Let you perish? No, no, of course not. I shake my head. It's a little strange to hear you say you'll protect me. Not to mention it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Uh -huh. I have trained you. It is my responsibility to see things through and make sure my student doesn't get hurt. It's the, the master and student relationship now. The student is Charles Suppress, the master one day, won't me? Won't me? <laughs> Won't I? <laughs> ah, that makes a lot more sense. So it's not just because you think I'm an amazing person and you don't want me to die. It's because I'm your student. James tilts his head to the side, causing some of his bangs to fall into his eyes. Uh. I do not intend to see you die, student or not. And just like that, my insides turn off CRP. See? See, I'm not that bold to be leaning my head or lean against his shoulder or whatever. But we need to progress this fucking love story. So we're going to choose bold options all the way through. Unless it's a hug. Uh, if the kind choice happens to be a hug, I guess I'll go with the kind choice. And I let my head fall against his shoulder. Something uncertain flashes in those dark brown eyes of his. He tenses up at my gesture. Sir, we don't have much time. We don't chapters and time left so i need you to fall in love with me right now i'm also telling this to myself too i need to fall in love with him right now because uh this is probably the first game and route in total where i have not fallen for the character that we're supposed to fall for and we're nearing the end so you better be like a quick fall in love type because you're at the bottom tier still <laughs> i love my head okay i already read that Thanks, I say softly. It's nice to know you don't want me, Dad. James takes his time to respond, debating whether to push me away or leave me like this. It's clearly throwing him off his game, as he didn't expect any physical intimacy from my side. I don't want to see you. I don't want to see you die either. So don't do anything stupid, okay? Huh. James scoffs. The moment of uh, moment, the movement of his muscles ripples through me. There's an indication he wants to pull away, remove me. <laughs> That's my line. You have a knack for trouble, he says with a mocking chuckle. I close my eyes. Hmm, maybe you're right. I guess you had to make sure to be there for me when I fall. Uh. If you stumble, it is your own fault, he mutters. What if it's not? Mm. Whoa! You're getting close. <laughs> I say that as I'm the one leaning my head on his shoulder. <laughs> like, hey, hey, yo, bro. <laughs> I'll catch you regardless. He whispers near my ear. There are things in life that will never happen with near certainty pigs learning to fly the moon turning to the sun my heart racing and blushing at something james said was supposed to be one of them yet here i am desperately trying to use my short hair to cover my red cheeks because damn that was smooth uh. are you going to stay like this he suddenly asked yep i answer my voice monotone does it bother <laughs> you he sounds a, a small huff closing his eyes it helps distract my thoughts from tomorrow so let me stay for a bit i mumble james doesn't say anything but he doesn't remove me from his shoulder either he lets me be listening to his unique heartbeat eventually he starts preparing to say something mm. the ribbons that was of your doing wasn't it he asked softly my eyes flutter up at his stoic face the ones i tied to the trees Ugh. leading all the way back to the house he says yes that was me oh? why he asks because you needed a little help finding your way back, I say nonchalantly. I don't recall proposing such an idea. Exactly, you want to ask for my help, so I took the initiative. Huh. Jim huffs dismissively. Mm. Stubborn, he states. It worked, didn't it? You, you have no room to talk, so you're quite as stubborn, too. And he asks gleefully. He doesn't respond to the eyes eye shifting away from mine. There's a smile on my face that's hard to keep from growing. I snuggle up next to him, feeling brave enough to get so familiar with uh. him. Isn't it time you should rest in your own chambers? He finally asks. I suppose you're right. I remove myself from his shoulder with a slight sigh. I do need to sleep. Thanks for keeping me company, I say. This small chat with James did take my mind off things. James gets up from the couch and walks towards the staircase. Mm. 
Get as much rest as you still can. Sleep well. He then takes his leave. I sink back into the couch, taking a small moment before I get up to return to my room. I need, I need, I'm craving love story. <laughs> I need it to happen soon. <laughs> As much as I tried, I wasn't able to get a lot of sleep. There's this pit in my stomach, heavy and anxious, but it's combining with this exhilarating feeling as well. I'm nervous and also fired up. At least it gave me some peace of mind that I held up my end of the bargain and gave Mr. Invisible his new identity papers. We haven't heard from him since. Probably enjoying his new life away from Julio. The only thing he let us know is the time Julio was going to have a meeting, giving us some time to prepare. We're all here. King, James, Eok, and Eok are all in super suits. With Eok in his human form as well, Rai is staying behind as backup and our intel as he'll be monitoring the cameras inside the hotel. First, we're going to need to tap into those cameras though. Uh. Oh, damn Eok, you look so cool. You look so cool. I can't fall in love with you. You're you're not this route. If this is going <laughs> if this is going to work out, speak English, Kane warns him. I know you can. Yeah. Yes, no problem, Yuke answers in English. Everyone, please wear this in your ear, I say, as I hand everyone an earpiece. We can communicate through these. Oh. Yoke blows into the earpiece, creating a high-pitched feedback loop that makes the cringe and really remove mine. Try not to do that, Yoke, I say, rubbing my ear. He gives me a sheepish smile, looking a bit guilty. Before handing the earpiece to James, I briefly recall the memory of when I touched his ear, eliciting a strong reaction from him. I'm worried he may not want to wear it. Are you okay wearing this, I ask him. James tilts his head to give me a strange uh -huh. gaze. Why wouldn't I be? He says in English this time around. I don't know, sensitive ears, I guess? Huh. <laughs> James snatches the earpiece from my hand with a loud huff. It seems he's slightly embarrassed. Mind your own business, he grumbles, reverting back to his own language. He plugs the earpiece into his ear without any issues. Oh, also take this pill, I tell him, as I remember the motion sickness it gets in the car. James eyes a small round pill suspiciously. Mm -hmm. What is it? It's so you don't get nauseous in the car. We don't want you feeling out of sorts when you need to be sharp, a sharp of mind. James is about to rebut, but probably deny, but and probably deny he gets nauseous. So I take his hand and press the pill into his palm. Please, I urge him. This is my turn to give you medicine to help you feel better. His brown eyes flicker to mine, but then he closes them and pops the pill right into his mouth. I smile in relief at his obedience. He doesn't need water or anything. I cannot take pills. I feel like I've mentioned this before. Where I count down when I take my pills, and even after I count down from three, I still don't swallow <laughs> the pill. It's like, ugh. Now remember, first you gotta find the electric control panel so I can tap into the security cameras and tell you guys where Ben is holding up, says mm. Ryan. It's near the back entrance. Should be easy enough to break into, Kane adds in onto the conversation. It's going to be guarded, I pointed mm. out. No problem, we'll just take them out, says Kane with a confident nod. Yo, James, please don't harm anyone. Just stick close to us and stay on the lookout, alright? I warn the both of them. Mm. I'll be Michiko's second pair of eyes, Yo exclaims excitedly. Uh. Please don't do anything stupid, Rai warns me. Like what? I say innocently. Oh, Rai says nothing, steady po- Oh, hug! Oh, hugs! Oh. Julio's dangerous, so let me lose a sister to them as well. Oh, Rai, don't worry. Your sister is A-OK. -okay. She's my character. Main character doesn't die. I know. I'll be careful, I tell him. I release him, then wave my hand at him, trying to reassure him that it's going to be alright. But when I enter the minivan with everyone else, I know it's not that simple. This is uh, serious and dangerous. I might get hurt for real, or worse, die. Nah, psh, psh, no. I regret it if I don't go for the rest of my life. So I keep myself focused. Alright. By the time we arrive in the city, it's already dark. Kulio wasn't going to convene until after 6 p.m. at least. Our minivan is parked a seat, a street, a seat, a street further away from the hotel. Now we're in an alley at the servant entrance. We all hide behind a large dumpster, putting on our masks. Kane looks around the containers and inspect the entrance. Mm. No one is there, but there's a camera pointing at the door. We need to disable it without alarming them. How are we going to do that? I ask, worried. Kane just grins at me, putting his index finger to his thumb, creating a small spark. Mm. We're going to short circuit it for a bit. Mm. He stands up. Everyone get ready. We're, we're going to bust down those doors as soon as I fire at the camera. Take down anyone standing in your way. He means restrain them. I quickly correct Kane. Then Kane gets up, swiftly running towards the engines with hair cr crackling full of like he fires out a small beam of electricity towards the camera. Sparks go flying the camera appears to have shut down. King kicks against the doors, but they won't budge. Clearly locked on the inside. He kicks it again with more force, but the doors stay closed. Jane rushes past Kane, delivering a calculated kick in the middle of the door, and they break down. 
Kane gives James a dirty glare, but James rushes inside. Kane, there's no time. There's no time to be petty. <laughs> we scramble to follow after. We have like a mission to deal with here. Surprisingly, there's no one around to guard the back entrance. I quickly pull the doors closed. No, hoping no one noticed and broke it down. Go down this corridor and, ten, and then take a left, says Ray. Voice in my Ray's voice in my ear. He's giving us instructions as he's the one with the blueprints of the hotel. I gesture towards the, re the rest and we all hurry down the corridor. When we reach a corner, we halt. There's two guards stationed outside a whisper to them. They seem to be armed with weapons. Mm. I could take both of them. They don't look like supers, Kane suggests. If you can zap them so they can't react, I'll tie them up, okay? I say. Okay, go. Kane urges. That sounds so terrible. He jumps from behind the corner, extending both hands towards the guards. Start out at Kane suddenly announcing himself. The guards don't have time to react when Kane fries them both with his electricity. Their bodies spasm and they tumble down to the floor. My time to shine. I reveal myself as well and quickly shoot out thread from all my fingers, wrapping them around the guards' bodies. In under 30 seconds, I've got them wrapped up like a cocoon. They can't move nor talk. Eok, James, come help us move these bodies, I whisper to the earpiece. Kane fiddles around with the lock of the door, eventually having to lockpick it before he can open it. Eok and James helps us drag the two bodies inside the room. Alright, we're to the room quickly stopping for the two guards. There's conscious and, rig and wriggle around, but they can't do much when they're tied up like that. I quickly tie them up to a pole to make sure they can't slow their way like a caterpillar. Kane walks around the room. There are control panels and wires everywhere. Mm. Okay, right. Tell them. Tell time to tell me what to do. Says Kane. As Ray prattles off instructions, telling Kane which control panel to open and which wires to hook up with his own laptop, I stick close to the door with the other uh. two. Got eyes. Kane exclaims as he looks at his laptop. I lean over his shoulder to look at the screen. It shows the live feed of all the cameras in the hotel. There must be hundreds of them. There's so many. That's a lot. I sigh. It's so tiny too. I can hardly tell what's going on. Kane moves his mouse around and click on certain feeds, enlarging the video so we can get a uh. good look. He should either be in a room or at a meeting, says her. Well, obviously. Probably the penthouse or something, Kane putters darkly. He browses through the many camera feeds as we try to locate Benjamin. There, they are, ha they are having a meeting, I exclaim as I notice one camera feed. Kane enlarges the camera feed so we can have a better view. It's a large ballroom, tables spread across with many people in business suits, attending. Benjamin is at the front of the podium uh. speaking. The old man really is alive, Kane breathes out, still astonished at this fact. Kane, those are supers, I say, pointing at the bodyguards behind Benjamin's back. Shit, one of them is vapor. He literally breathes out poison. And the other one, I ask? Mm. Don't recognize them. That means we should be careful. Oh my god, the power to breathe out poison? How do you talk to people? How do you, like, kiss people? <laughs> How do you eat? <laughs> As if we shouldn't already be careful around someone that can make us die by simply breathing, I snark. Right, what should we do? Mm. Ask Kane. There are five other supers in the same room. It seems almost impossible to extract the target like this. Well, that's why we have here. What? That's why we have here in the electricity room. I explained to cause the blackout. There was a debate on how to cause the blackout. The easiest solution was going to be Kane short circuiting the system entirely. But when he came to deal with the other supers, so we could, he couldn't stay behind. It was Eok that offered to stay behind. I'm still not a fan as Eok cannot defend himself if caught. Oh, Eok, you look so cute. You. I keep calling you different uh, Eok and Eok. I don't know which one it is. He looks so cute though. Sorry. Look. He's so... Not falling for him. Not falling for him. Mm. I'll be careful. Do not worry about me, he says confidently. Alright. I say, still unsure. Once the blackout has set in, we can capture the target in a little bit. A confusion pull him out. I can't yawn it. I think I'm breathing in too much air or something. I can encap... Encap... Vapor, but I still don't know who the other super is and what they can do, so we need to be careful. King glances at the laptop again, thinking over our current a current plan. I put my finger at the security feed of all of the ballroom. Which floor is that ballroom? I ask. Oh. Seems it's the twelfth floor, pretty up high. Pretty high up, the answer is right. Right, pull out the blueprints. There's gotta be Vince in that Celine. There's no way you can from around the hallways undetected. Getting to the bar in the first place is impossible. The entrance to the elevator and stairway are completely guarded. That's why we decided to use the vents to get around. They're big enough to crawl through without anyone catching oh. us out. There's one main line running through the middle of the ceiling with three vents openings. Oh, okay, says Fry. Great, let us know where to go. There's a vent in this room we could get entered through. I look up at the ceiling in this room and see if then we could easily open up and uh. enter. There's not much to guide you for. Once you hit the dead end, it's just straight up from there. Kane, help me get rid of this grate. Kane helplessly throws his arms up in the uh. air. You know I'm short, right? I said no, you can still joke at a time like this, I say with a chuckle. 
James then bends down and one knee in front of me. His brown eyes look up. Use my back, he says. Well, I certainly didn't expect James to offer his help straight away. I step closer to him and raise my knees, eventually planting a foot right on right on his shoulder. Thankfully, he's so beefy and muscular, he remains very staple as I try to climb onto his back. James holds onto my ankle ankle as I try to place the other's foot other foot on top of him. When I've got both feet on his foot, shoulders i raise my hands towards the ceiling still too high i complain i shriek when james rises from the gr ground and stand i would say grind gr ground and stands up straight nearly causing me to knock my head against the ceiling a little warning next time i grumble you can reach it now yes yes in the deadpan voice i focus my attention back on the grate which is fixed by screws on all four corners thankfully that's one of the tools we brought with us king screwdriver i ask extending my hand he quickly retrieves a screwdriver from next to the laptop and hands it over to me. I start using it to unscrew bolts from the frame. Once I've got the last one unscrewed, I dig my fingers through the grate and pull on it. It detaches from the ceiling and I drop it down to give it a cane. I poke my head through the vent, coughing at the mound of dust into my lungs. How's it looking up? Uh, looking in there, Michiko asks her eye. Dusty, I answer honestly. It goes to the right for a bit and then it goes up once it reaches the wall, I explain. Huh. Yep, exactly like the blueprints. You're going to have to climb that vent for 12 stories. Neat, I answer sarcastically, now give me a flashlight. Kenny has a flashlight clicking it on. I shine it through the vent and bite down on the handle with my teeth. Then I hoist myself up inside. Alright. I crawl through the vent until I reach the dead end. I shine a flashlight up. It's a very long shaft. It probably spans the entire building. I focus my energy to the tip of my fingers and start weaving together a strong rope. It'll help with climbing up. I start guiding it up through the vent. James leaps up into the vent as well. Yo, this vent must be huge if James could fit through it. Because he's beefy. He's a chunky, muscular man. I wonder if he can even fit through the vent. He's so big and the shaft is pretty narrow. If he gets stuck, oh. it's so cramped in here. Kane complains when James has lifted him up inside. Just be glad you're small, I mm. say. Hey, he argues. You don't even have to carry a flashlight with that hair of yours, I giggle. <laughs> How about you start moving focus on the mission he has? Eventually, I try. I could tell I reach a dead end with the, my rope and quickly attach it to the metal. I pull it on it. I pull on it to test its strength, good enough to hold our weights combined. I take the flash eye on my mouth and attach it to one of the pouches on my hips. Ready? I tell everyone. All right, let's go. Says Clint Kane. Yok, do you know what to do? I'm a little concerned about leaving you behind. I talk through the earpiece. Yok is a trained soldier. You don't know how to worry about small fry like him. Says James. He's not a small fry. Defending Yok. No, Prince James is right. I am a trained soldier and I'll be fine. Your brother will give me instruction to follow, so please be careful going up, says Eok. Fine, just make sure you go back to the car when you're done, okay? <laughs> Understood, he says with a chuckle. Alright, up you go. James cuts in and gives me a boost. I cling onto the rope and start to climb. James follows me, grabbing onto the rope and lifting himself up. I'm not the best climber, but I do still remember my PE classes. Thank God I did not have that during PE, because I have no upper strength. Kane follows our, sam uh, our example. The three of us start making our way all the way up. Each time I pass by an intersection, I make sure to count them because we have to stop at the 12th. God, I really do hope we'll be on the right floor, I mutter darkly. Mm. We'll be able to tell soon enough if we were on the right floor or not, James reassures um. me. Yeah, sorry sis, I can't help you there. My drone can't go inside the building to help out, or it tells me in an apologetic voice. Suddenly something squishy falls right on my face. I shriek when I spot to accidentally let go of the rope. I slide down fast, coming to a stop when I crash into James. Why did you let go, he says, his voice muffled because I've smothered him. I've smothered him. Oh, that was scary. Glad I didn't let go of the rope or else would have crashed poor, crushed poor Kate. Sorry, I apologize I reached for the rope again. A bug fell, fell down on me, I explained. A bug? A bug? Kane repeats incredulously. It scared me, okay? I defend myself. We're infiltrating Julio, a mission where we could possibly die. You get scared by a bug? Uh -huh. That is a strange weakness to have, James agrees. Shut up, both of you. Leave me alone, I lied. <laughs> Standing up against the most powerful creature in the universe yet gets frightened by a bug, James mutters. <laughs> I grit down on my teeth and climb up again, not in the mood of getting roasted by everyone. But it did settle my nerves a bit. I continue my climb. After what seems like forever, I reach the 12th floor and quickly crawl into the side shaft so I can rest. Finally, no more climbing. My hands were hurting by the time I got to the 6th floor. I scooch over to make room for James and Kane. This is it, asks Kane. To count, right? Guess we'll find out soon enough, I say in a foreboding tone. Now be quiet, they may actually hear us. We crawl through the small space until I reach a point where there's a good grate. Light emerges from it. I peek down through the small holes. It's the ballroom. We're on the right floor. We're here, I tell them. I scan the room through the small openings, trying to locate Benjamin and everyone else. He's on a podium, talking. He's further back. I think we should be able to get right above him. 
The three of us venture further into the shaft until we're near the back of the ballroom. We can hear him talk from here. With these weapons, we can neutralize all the filth from this world, speaks the voice of Benjamin. <laughs> Is that really my dad? King asks with a scoff. He's talking about the weapon they created from the bracelet, I say. This makes me sick, he grumbles. James crawls up towards me to look through the grid mm. as well. The men behind him look like bodyguards, he notes. Yes, it seems they're supers. Wait, that's vapor. I recognize the one in, on the right, clad in black and green super suit. Uh -huh. Really? Fuck. We gotta be quick then, because he would choke us all out by turning the air toxic, says uh -huh. King. Can't believe he's a Hulu supporter. He tacks uh -huh. on. The other one, do you recognize him, asked James. King, what do you think? James makes room for Kane to look through the grid as well. I had to back up even further through the shaft. I can hear his metal creak and rumble beneath my hands and knees. No, I don't recognize them. This is risky if we don't know what kind of ability they have. Perhaps you can incapacitate them, uh, incapacitate them while I focus on Benjamin, I tell Kane. What about Vapor? Hold your breath, I guess, shrugging. We're ready for the blackout, asks yeah. Kane. Ready for your command, he yeah. answers. We can initiate a countdown, says Rai. I tap James' shoulder. You ready to pull them in, I ask. James turns around and goes over the grate to make room for me. He should be up here within a second, he replies confidently. I crack my knuckles to shift my weight. I'm ready. Good, let me stop. What is that? The war beneath me shatters the metal of the vent tears open, causing me to fall through it. Oh, what a, what a grand entrance we're making here. <laughs> what a grand entrance. Cut the lights. Cut the lights right now. No one can react quickly. Not even James who tries to grab me, but is unable to move fast enough in, a, in such a cramped space. I quickly shoot out through from all my fingertips and a desperate measure to hook onto something to save myself from crushing my spine. They latch on the ceiling and it, slow, it slows up my fall, but they all snap immediately under my weight. I clapped on top of an unsuspecting person. All the air is pushed out of my lungs. My back feels paralyzed from the sharp pain of impact. Momentarily, I'm out of sorts and can't move. Hello, Benjamin! Blackout. Blackout the ballroom right now. Blackout. Of course it was Benjamin I dropped down on. Oh fuck. Well, I mean, it's kinda easy then. I look around in panic, expose the crowd in the ballroom. On display for anyone to see. Then the lights shut off in the crowd. Rap, gasp. Kill her! Whoa! Chillo. <laughs> Benjamin yells in the dark. Shit, I can barely move. I try to pick myself up from the floor, but the body. My body feels like lead. The sharp pain is throbbing and is pushing me over the edge to vomit. Scraped footsteps sound through the ballroom as bodyguards rush over to me. Someone lifts me up from the floor and aims a gun to my head. Did he actually say my name? It literally sounded like it. Oh my god. Though dark, I can see his shadow leap from the ceiling above. His fists put pulled back, ready to unleash fur, fu fur, fury, not furry, fury on my captor. Break the oath, he yells. My heartbeat slows down to a crawl as I feel time decelerate. I raise both my hands up to my chest. I wish to break the oath, he yells loudly. The backs of my hands burn and sizzle immediately. Holy shit, that's, that's... Isn't there consequences for me breaking the oath, though? Oh my god. What is happening? This is... Why plants never go correctly half the time. James dramatically tears off the bracelet and freezes. Phases. He lands down and punches the guard away from me, quickly pulling me up in his arms. My black ugh, my back glows with a hot warmth from the pain, but I try my best not to make a sound. A flash of glowing blue looks down at me before he turns around to rush after Benjamin. Shoot them, yells Benjamin. Oh fucking hell. Gunshots are being fired into random directions, but with James' superhuman speed, he easily dodges them all. The super we didn't rec uh, recognize confronts James and throws a ball of energy at him. It doesn't even slow James down as he kicks the super into his stomach, launching him across the room. The lights turn back on sooner than expected. I start to cough and the air prickles my lungs. I know that's Vapor's work, but it doesn't matter. James reaches Benjamin and grabs onto his shirt. You vulture, release me at once, Benjamin cries out. James braces himself against the ground, snug, snugly holding me with his other arm against his chest, and he flies up towards the ceiling. Jump on my back now, he hits towards Kane, who's been watching up from above. Kane doesn't even question him as he jumps down, landing onto James' back. Carrying three people, James flies towards the large windows in the ballroom. Prepare yourselves, he, prepare yourself, he warns us. I press my face against his chest and keep my eyes shut. He barrels straight through the glass, shattering it as he flies out of the building. All right, we got the man. And the oath has been broken. Is it the, uh, broken only for James or broken for both James and Eok? Like, which one? James lands in front of our minivan, gently lowering me down. Kane hops off his back and opens the back doors. I quickly conjure some thread 
to tie down Benjamin, including wrapping it around his mouth so he'll stop yelling. He's thrown into the back of the van. I can't believe that just happened, he says, still in a bit of shock. Where we followed, I asked, looking mm. around us. No, nah, no one there had super speed. We're good, Kate replies. How are your injuries? asked James, phasing back to normal. I'm not gonna lie, I can barely stand. I think I may have broken a couple of ribs as well, I oh. answer honestly. You broke your ribs? Right shrieks in my ear. Ouch, keep it down, I'm still alive and we got Benjamin. Uh. We need to retreat, James says with concern. No, I nearly shout. We need it. We have to go back and get Eok. Are you serious? I thought Eok escaped by now. James, well, I mean, that did happen really barely, like maybe a minute. Two, two minutes, five minutes, I don't know. Uh, he should have left after they turned off the lights. James closed his eyes shut in irritation, but he holds it back a sigh. Fine, we'll retrieve him and leave immediately. You need medical attention. Kane's gaze lands upon James' wrist. Is that alright? He asks me. The ramifications of me breaking the oath and James not wearing the bracelet to disable his power anymore is something I don't want to think about just yet. This man saved me and that's worth it. But isn't this gonna alert those people that his uh, bracelet is off? <laughs> It's fine, let's go get Eok. I'm staying here, I need to have a little chat with my father, Kane says darkly as he climbs into the back of the van and closes the doors. Mm. You should stay here, I'll achieve it myself, James tells me. No, take me with you. Mm. You're hurt. I said, take me with you. You may still need help, I insist. Mm. Perpetually stubborn. James reaches out for me with his hand, but then he awkwardly keeps it hanging midway, unsure what uh. to do. Ribs, you said, he asks. Realizing he's unsure of how to hold me that I've, now that I'm injured, I end up flashing my first smile at him since the chaos that unfolded. Carry me like a princess. <laughs> Is it really a time for that? Sure, why not? <sighs> but you aren't one. I huff. It's an expression. Just carry me in your arms. James takes my hand and pulls me up, putting me putting his arms underneath my legs to support my shoulders. It still hurts, but it's probably the best position right now. Then he flies off towards the hotel. There's a sight we didn't expect to see. I was expecting guards and super swarming outside to come get us, except the street is surrounded by black minivans. There are people in black suits all over the place. These aren't the same people I saw in the hotel. James lowers me to the ground, being aware of our surroundings. What's going on? And she goes Forrester Inc. right into my thoughts. Then I see Yoko converge from the entrance, handcuffs, handcuffed behind his back, escorted by a man in a black suit. Yoko, I yell, rushing after him. A person with a gun holds me back. Ma'am, please stay back. This is an active crime scene. Well, well, even with the mask, can't fool me, Miss Melody. Here, my name is Whirler on a senior forester step out of a black mm. car. I should have expected you were involved in this. Please release the yoke, I tell mm. him. As far as I know, the extraterrestrials were supposed to be in a safe house, including you. Neil beckons at the guard to release Eok. He rushes to my side. Thankfully, he appears unharmed. Are you okay? I ask, just to be sure. Uh, what about you? I heard you took a fall. Are you okay to stand? He sounds worried. I give an apologetic smile. Uh. Tell me, why did you interfere with our operation? Asked Neil. Your operation? I repeat, surprised. Mm -hmm. Why did you get your in intel that Hulu will be here? I told you about my informant, I stress. Miss mm -hmm. Melody, you're not even a registered superhero. What exactly are you doing running around playing hero? Huh. She's the only one actually doing something to take on a group of terrorists. James speaks mm -hmm. for me. We should be thanking mm -hmm. her. What's this? He's not wearing the bracelet. Neil sounds uh. aghast. You there, bring me a bracelet at once. Neil barks at one of the men near him. Uh, what were you thinking, letting those ex loose, letting loose an extraterrestrial? This is for your own safety, Miss Melody. A plenty safe. It was an emergency. I would have died otherwise. I defend my decision. Huh. If you were at the safe house where you should have been, you wouldn't have been in a dangerous situation, now would you? He asked sarcastically. The same man returns with the bracelet. Hmm. Cuff it, Neil instructs. The man places the bracelet around James' wrist, which he surprisingly allows. Neil sighs and shakes uh. his head. You've broken countless viol violations. I should have apprehended you right here and right now. But you're not, I see challenging his uh. bluff. No, because I believe you're harboring a very dangerous man and we need him. It seems Neil's, Neil knows what's happened so far. Perhaps they were catching everything from afar, or even through the security cameras that Rai hacked into. Take me to him. I honestly don't have a choice at this point. We were going to hand him over to Forrester Inc. eventually, right after we had our own talk with him, because he's got a lot of questions to answer. Fine, I say through gritted teeth. Follow me. Kane is waiting by the van. He's surprised to see Neil and two other men walk with us. Huh? Hey, hey, what's going on here? He asked, stepping away from the mm -hmm. van. Step aside, Boltage. Open the doors. I nodded Kane with a sigh. Do it. They've seen everything. Kane bites down on his bottom lip and angrily opens the doors, revealing Benjamin tied up in the back. His eyes grow wide in fear when he sees Neil. Mm. Good, take him in, he's coming with us. The two men pull Benjamin out of the van. 
Wait, we call him. He's ours. Kane interjects. <laughs> ours. You should have brought him to us. What were you thinking? Keeping a terrorist a secret. Neil scoffs at him. You abide by our laws. Any fugitive or terrorist apprehended will be sent to force certain headquarters. Kane growls. But he's... Mm. I have no interest in hearing your reasoning. Leave now before you, you face real repercussions. Neil turns uh. to him. And you, I'm going to ignore the transgressions you've committed today. As long as you return to the safe house and stay there this time. He doesn't know about the oath being broken. <laughs> Neil takes Benjamin away and we're left with nothing. Kane's hands are balled to fist by his side, but he's not angrily rushing in either. Dejectedly, I direct my gaze towards the ground. This is out of my hands. Michiko, what do we do now? Asks the yolk, looking at me with those with these sad eyes. We go home, my father. Yeah, I'm hurt. I'm broken. Your girl's broken. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure... I'm positive there's 29 chapters. There's no way we can finish this game within two episodes. 26 and 27. There's no way. Unless I have just... There's no bad ending. There's only like the the nice and the feisty ending, right? Or whatever. They're both good endings. But did we... Uh, being friendzoned is a good ending, I guess, right? Technically. <laughs> I don't know. But there's no love in this club. Maybe in the next two two episodes, it's gonna just come piling and crashing all at once. Two to four episodes, I don't know. Well, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.